Hi folks, and welcome back to Home Build Happiness. You are now tuning in to episode three of the CTC build. That would be our cargo trailer conversion. That's this guy right here. So this week we're gonna get a little bit in the weeds, all right? We're gonna talk about electrical theory. We're gonna talk about the power system that's in this, uh, this rig. And I'm gonna try not to put you guys to sleep. Let's keep it as, as upbeat as we can, all right? So I'm gonna split this video into three sections. Uh, the, the first one's going to talk about basically the solar side of this unit. The second part's going to discuss the wiring over to the other side where our, um, our changeover switch and load center is. And then we're going to discuss the, the changeover switch, the load center, and the receptacles. I guess the first thing that I, I just want to break down for everybody, it seems like it might be a little complicated, but it's really not, and that's solar power. So. Some, some folks know a little bit about it, some folks know a lot about it, some people are afraid of it. It's really not that hard. So basically, for a solar setup, we have three major components. That's going to be your solar panels, it's going to be a charge controller, and it's going to be a battery. Now within that, you've got all sorts of variables. And we're not going to go fully into detail on those. Really? This fan is really mucking things up, man. And within all of those components, there's a bunch of variables, and we're not gonna go deep down into the weeds on those, but some of those variables can include your panels, monocrystalline or polycrystalline, flexible, bifacial, solid fixed panels, uh, 12 volt, 24 volt, goes on and on and on. You can also wire those in series or in parallel. When it comes to your controllers, you can have PWM, you can have MPPT, and then with your batteries, you can have a whole bunch of different chemistries. So we can have lithium iron phosphate, we can have sealed lead acid, we can have flooded, um, you got AGM batteries. There's just a lot of variables there. The basics of this, and all you need to know, is that your solar panels basically work as your power source. Your battery is simply a battery. It's just a way to store capacity. And this charge controller, all it is is a battery controller. Nothing more. Don't overcomplicate that. Just know that you have a power source, a battery charger, and a battery. That's no different than what you would have if you were charging like AA batteries inside your house. The wall is your power source. Your battery charger is your battery charger, and your AA is simply a way of holding capacity. That's all that we're talking about here. So what we're working with in this rig is four 100 watt, 12 volt monocrystalline solar panels from Renogy. Those feed into the wall right here, and those go to a 40 amp charge controller. It's a Renogy Rover MPPT controller. And all that that means is that this is a charge controller that has the ability to charge up to 40 amps to our battery. Don't get confused thinking that the, the bigger charge controller you have, the more you can charge your batteries. You must have the solar capabilities to deliver that power to the charge controller. And then for our battery, we're using a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Ampere Time. And everything that you see in this video was purchased on Amazon. If you check the description in this video, you'll find the links that'll take you exactly to what we purchased. Nothing on this build has been sponsored. Um, we don't get anything from anybody for telling you it's good. I'm just telling you what my experiences are because we bought the stuff. We use it, it's in the middle of the daytime in Florida right now. We're running an air conditioner right now on 74 degrees. And, well, I don't know what the temperature is outside, but it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. It's, it's, it's peak, it's, the temperature's ripe, everybody. And as you see, we're only pulling 300 watts to cool this rig too. If you wanna see a review on the air conditioner, let me know in the comments. Drop something down there. I'll put together one for you. 
I'll tell you about it. We'll share the wealth. So with that solar configuration, the next thing we want to be able to do in this camper is plug in things like you would in your house. And that's a different type of power. So what we're talking about with this battery is 12 volts of direct current. And that's basically what your car uses. What your house uses is 120 volts of alternating current. So what we need to be able to do is convert that electricity from the battery's power over to that 120 volts of alternating current. And the way we do that is with a product called an inverter, which is this device you see up here that's got the red display on it. What an inverter does is it takes that 12 volts of DC power and it's able to transfer it and convert it to 120 volts of alternating current. Basically, you take an inverter, you take a car battery, you plug wires into one end, you get a receptacle on the other end where you can plug pretty much anything you want to into it. Now what we've done is we've ran some cords from that plug and then we've moved it over to the other side of this trailer. All right, folks, so from this point, let's backtrack now. We've got our solar panels and they're gonna deliver us power whenever the sun's out. We have a battery charger, it's gonna take that power and give us a nice consistent current to our battery and keep it charged. Now from there, we have the option of running car stuff, like 12 volt stuff, or we can run it to an inverter, which gives us the ability to have a house plug on it and have house power. So from that point, what we've done in this trailer is we ran two wires down the wall, under the floor, to the other side of this trailer. And, and those lines consist of one 12 volt power, which is simply a wire that goes from the battery over here. And then one house power line. Think about it like this. In your home, you wanna move power from this wall so over here, you use an extension cord. It's very similar to that. All we've done is wired a wire from the inverter to this side and a wire from the battery to this side. That gives us 120 volts of alternating current to work with, and it gives us another source that has 12 volts, simply like your car would have. Folks, don't you love it when you get older and your back's hurting, and instead of you actually having to lift things, all you do is think about it and go, and it's done. Ah, that's great. And those wires basically terminate right here on this side. So our 12 volt line comes from the battery and it basically wires to the switch. And this gives us various items that we can hook up to it. It gives us USB charging, a gauge, and a cigarette lighter connection. And we have this linked in the description as well, everybody. And basically our 12 volt needs consist of lights, our water pump, and then we have three additional rocker switches for anything we want to hook up in the future. Our 120 volt line leaves our inverter and it comes right down here to this switch. And I'll throw up a couple slides, try to explain this as simply as I can. This switch basically gives us the ability to take three different types of inputs into it. And it allows us to put one type of input out of it. What that basically means is we have an outlet for our generator to connect to this box. We can wire our grid power into this box, and we can also wire our solar. And our 120 volt power all basically terminates right here. Everything that comes into this unit before it hits any sort of a receptacle comes through this changeover switch. And the purpose of this switch is to allow us to use a generator, a grid power, or solar power and one doesn't backfeed into the other one. So we can switch between those modes of power. It basically functions as an isolation switch.
And then from there, all the power runs to our 30 amp load center right here. And I know a lot of folks have questions when it comes to power and it comes to hooking these load centers up. And because I do have power running through them right now, I'm not going to take them apart, but I will throw up a slide of this particular load center. So you have three lines coming into a 30 amp load center. You have a ground, which is either green or bare. You have a neutral, which is white, and a hot line, which is black. So your ground is always going to go to a grounding bus bar. And you generally have to buy those bus bars separately. The load center will have a neutral bus bar and that's where all of your white lines will go. All of your neutral lines for both your inbound and outbound will connect to the neutral bus bar. All of your lines inbound and outbound will connect to your ground bus bar on the ground side. In this trailer, we did not bond neutral to ground. And then your hot line will come in and it will attach to the uh, to to the lug for the hot side that'll be the same lug that your breakers will connect to and then anything that's going outbound from that box will connect to a breaker now folks in our case we have a 30 amp load center that has two breakers on it we run two 15 amp breakers one is Breaker A is dedicated to only one receptacle, and that receptacle powers our air conditioner in the summer and our heater in the winter. The other 15 amp breaker powers every single other receptacle in this unit. We have four receptacles total. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Um, I would love to go into more detail with people. It's just that because there are so many things you can do, um, I, I would not recommend just seeing what I'm doing and trying to apply what I've done to, to what you want to do. It might not be the best option. And also with anything you see myself or anyone else doing, always get on your forums. Uh, it, the NEC forums are a great resource. The Mike Holt forums are a great resource, especially when it comes to kind of understanding what the, the proper way to do this is. Um, and a lot of that should be adhered to. So anything you see, always make sure that it's safe. And if you're gonna play with power, make sure, you know, a lot of people when it comes to firearms, they don't even clean the firearms in the same room with ammunition. They make sure it's completely separate. And in that same, in that same vein, when it comes to power, when you go into a workbox or you're starting to wire this stuff, make sure there isn't even a possibility for power to happen. All right, here we go again, folks. Shazam! I wonder if I can do that for grocery shopping. You think so? I don't know. I don't know. Let's try it. Whoa! Pulled peanuts, greens, black-eyed peas. Hey, I'm from the South, guys. When I dream about food... Hey, what do you say, right? Well, hey, listen. So that's basically where we're at. That's how we power this thing. And then all we did when we were setting up our walls, if you watched the last video, you'll see that we have power coming in through the top. Check that video out. I'm going to link it right up here for you. You'll see how we wired the wire through the roof, and you'll see how we put some of this stuff in place. And that's going to be shown off in episode two. It's right there check it out and if you like the video if it's entertaining if you've learned something please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel folks we're not making any money off of this nothing sponsored we don't have a lot of subscribers and by you liking and subscribing the content it lets us know that we're actually putting out good videos we're putting out stuff you want to see so it's a win-win let us know in the comments let us know with your like that we're doing a good job guys so that's going to do it for episode three I appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next Friday, all right? What are we going to do next Friday? I don't know. You'll just have to wait and see, guys. Bye.